Today I want to start a new video series where I go over some of my own personal projects and talk about what I've been working on. This is going to be the introductory video for a GPS speedometer project I've been doing. Now I really like biking um, and I had one of those RPM based speedometers that uses a magnet attached to the wheel with a Hall effect sensor and then counts it and that worked all right but I didn't like that that much and I really didn't like having to replace the battery every now and then. It's just tedious. So I decided to make my own uh, LiPo powered GPS based speedometer uh, because it was cool. As much as I've enjoyed using this, I think it's time to improve it and start a new revision. So I'm going to tear this down and showcase different aspects of it and then talk about what I'm going to do to change this for the next version. Okay, so first we'll go over the case design as I disassemble this. I just have some Velcro straps here to attach it to the handlebars of the bike and a case made out of laser cut acrylic. Now originally I was going to use a weld uh, fluid on the acrylic to bind it all together but decided against that as I ended up making changes to it very often. So for now it's just been electrical taped and the electrical tape's glue was starting to wear out so I'd put the rubber band around it. So now we have the core here. Um, go ahead and shut it off and remove the battery. So this is just, take the battery off here, a battery from a quadcopter I have. Um, 680 milliamp hour uh, LiPo, single cell. So, uh, and I have just a charge module from Adafruit on there. Uh, yep, and that, uh, that was a necessary purchase because the battery, if you undercharge a LiPo, can be permanently damaged, so you have to make sure you have a smart discharge circuit to not damage it. Plus, this also boosts up to 5 volts. So next we have the display. Now this is basically a plain LCM1602 display. It's 16 characters wide by 2 characters tall. Um, the only big difference is, as you probably saw, it had a red backlight because it has an RGB addressable backlight. So you can change the color of the display, although that doesn't really fully work because they were smart enough to use a display that has a blue tint to it, so white isn't actually possible. That's annoying. We have the GPS here, which is a higher quality GPS that can do a 10 hertz refresh rate. It's got 66 channels, I think. Uh, connects up to a bunch of satellites. I don't remember the exact specs, but it's not really important right now. Um, this outputs the information over serial which you can then read in and parse to get your speed and your location and all that fun stuff. And sandwiched in the middle of all of this is Raspberry Pi Zero. Now the Raspberry Pi is a good place to start talking about why I want to make changes to this device. The Raspberry Pi takes a ton of power and is a way overkill CPU for basically converting the serial input from the GPS to a parallel output for the display. The reason that I actually wanted that is because I plan on using the camera module and recording video while this collects GPS data and basically making it a dash cam. That's just because it sounds like fun. That's the only reason I'm doing that. Plus, um, I'm going to change out this uh, Raspberry Pi Zero to a Raspberry Pi Zero W in the future and have it automatically upload that video when it connects to a Wi-Fi network and then sync it all. But that's not something unique to the Raspberry Pi. You could have done that with an ESP8266, really. Next I want to talk about that display. So 16 characters by 2 characters, basically just limited ASCII set. It's not very easy to get the output that I want on here and I want to change that out for another display. Uh, other problems are, this is a negative display, so it's very, very hard to see in direct sunlight. Um, that was a very poor, that was a poor choice. I didn't really buy it for this purpose, I just bought it because it was a cool RGB display and it wasn't 
too terribly expensive, but it wasn't cheap. Um, and then I ended up using it for this so I could have colors to alert me of stuff when I'm not looking directly at it. Um, fortunately, I ended up doing a lot of night bike riding, so it hasn't been too big of a problem. Now, I would like to replace that display with a true reflective display, like an original Game Boy would have. Um, but I do want it to be lit because I do night riding, so I need to come up with either a display that has a reflective technology and the front light, or I have to create my own front light for an existing display. Now let's talk about the other side where we're looking at more technical things. So for the next revision, I plan on laying out a circuit board and moving all of the components directly onto that and not needing layers and layers of PCB on here. So the charge circuit will be incorporated into my design so I will not be using a standalone module like that anymore. And that brings us to the GPS, which is one of the reasons why I want to move away from modules. This device was $40. That is a lot for a little module like that. You can get the chip alone on AliExpress for about $12 to get what should be the same quality chip. And that's one of the parts that makes this very expensive. Uh, that was 40, this is 20, and that was 14. So we're looking at $74 um, in just accessories to the Raspberry Pi, which was only, which is 10 bucks. They say it's a $5 computer, but you can't get it to your house for less than 10 bucks. So we're looking at $84 for this whole thing, which is way too much money. So we're gonna try and cost reduce this a bit. And before we move on to take a look at the software, Let's just go over the case again really quick. This was laser cut acrylic. Um, again, I thought I was going to seal these all together and then have it be basically watertight. But then as I realized, I didn't have wireless charging and I needed to recharge it, you know, that didn't really happen. So I'm going to design a case to be 3D printed and I will have to get that made elsewhere as I don't own a 3D printer. But that'll be another fun step in this project. Well, now that we've covered all this, let's go ahead and take a look at the software that runs this. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over the code running my GPS speedometer. So I have this uh, set up with uh, different classes to handle the GPS and the LCD to make my life a little bit easier here. So we just set it to use the serial port that the uh, GPS is connected to, which it is soldered directly to the GPIO serial port on the Raspberry Pi, making that pretty easy. Uh, we then have a class that allows us to send text to the LCD uh, with a position to print it, and then the backlight is configurable with a 3-bit display, or 3-bit value that is red, green, and blue for the different LEDs. While I could add in PWM for the backlight, I really hate PWM, so I'm not going to do that. Plus, that'd be very distracting while you're riding a bike to look down and have the display flickering. You'd have to get it going pretty quick to not be a problem. So down in our main loop here, we update the GPS as often as we can, and this basically just processes all the serial input. When the GPS has a fix on satellites, we go into this area of the code, and here it waits until there was new data that was processed by the GPS that we can print to the display. Now the display code prints the time, your speed, and either your latitude and longitude or your overall distance since it has been running. So every three seconds here we change between your latitude and your longitude and your total distance. Then every time it changes this display it shows your average speed which is calculated with a low pass filter from the current speed. The way that I'm calculating total distance isn't great, but it's been working fairly well. I'm taking the miles per hour and dividing that by the one second that we've got that speed for, and then adding that to the total distance. So while we only have a resolution of one second intervals, that works fairly well for biking speeds. I imagine if you were walking it wouldn't work as well, but it's been pretty reliable, and I've checked the distances it's given me for both driving and biking against Google Maps, and it's been nearly dead on every time. Very small margin of error. All right, let's take a look at the GPS code.
and we can see when we call the update, we look for new serial input, which I just wrote a basic wrapper class for the Linux serial IO uh, to get it processed as lines. So that just makes life easier here. So when we get a new input, we check if any of the lines have a GPMRC in them, which is one of the lines that you get for the output of the GPS over serial. And we have a strange format of the latitude and longitude that uses the hours, minutes, seconds format, but it's not quite normal. I believe these are the hours on this one and these are the hours on this one, so it's not the same. So you need to know that when you're processing this data. And I believe this is your speed in knots. It's been a while since I looked at the code and I have it in the background, but um, I have to, I convert that to miles per hour because I've been raised in a stupid country that uses the imperial system. So that is meaningful to me. So here we can see we tokenize the string by delimiting on commas, and then we get the different values that we want out of it. I also check this string to make sure that there is valid data in it, and I use that to determine if I have a fix on the GPS. And then from here, I'm just converting the latitude and longitude. And like the comments say here, you I should modify this to be a little bit more proper. Now, one of my big problems with this code is that this is all a single thread and that's not a great way of doing this I really need to break this out into separate threads and that would make coding this so much easier to use um, the GPS should be able to update on its own in the background and the display should probably be able to update on its own as well especially if I change out to a more complicated display which we should take a look at now LCM 1602 type displays use a standard interface chip here and they have a parallel input that's either 8-bit or 4-bit, 8-bit or 4-bit, depending on how you initialize it. And then this one is unique in that it has three backlights. The way I've written the software should allow it to be configurable with any of the different varieties of it. I it believe it comes in an 8x1 to a 20x4, maybe more, I don't know. But I don't need that and I wanted this to be small but large enough to display everything I need. So just the standard 16 by 2. And I'm not going to cover how you initialize an LCM 1602 because I'm probably going to be moving away from this display in the future. I would like to use one that has uh, graphics capabilities, i.e. just defining each pixel individually. And I think it'd be more fun to create some kind of UI that is a little more interesting to look at. So that's one of the reasons why I need it to be a separate thread, is I want that to be able to update independently in the background of all the other code. So that covers the basics of everything in the code. Um, all of this is available on GitHub as of the time this video has been put up. I was never really going to release this, but eh, I'm making a video about it. I might as well. Um, I'll probably end up making a new repository for the new code because this is all just kind of eh. I also want to add some more stuff like if I'm going to have a fancy user interface I will need some kind of input buttons so I'm gonna have to add some more stuff to the device the only switch that was on there if you saw was a power switch and that just cuts power from the battery to everything which it's not the best idea on Linux, but, you know, it's it's been working. I haven't encountered any problems, and the only thing on the Raspberry Pi is this code, which is on my server, because I use Git to sync it, so it's not a big deal. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up the introduction to my old GPS project here. Um, the next steps I think I'm going to take are trying to find a display and then recreating this on a breadboard with a new... Uh, Pi Zero. I'm not going to take this apart. I mean, I kind of want to take out the GPS module because that's a bit of a waste and I don't really want to buy another one at that expense. Maybe I'll see if there's a cheaper module I can get because I want to re-breadboard this whole thing and start from scratch on the software and put some little buttons around it, you know. So we'll take a look at that once I have that going. But for now, um, if you have any questions about something like this, this is kind of a weird project or different things feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll try and get back to you on that 
But for now, uh, yeah, hope that was useful to someone else.